In this video, I want to show you how to study or analyze the motion of a four bar linkage. Let me write it down four bar linkage. We have four rods or four members of some kind of mechanism which can move with one degree of freedom. I will sketch it here, but I want to show you an animation with MATLAB. I have also prepared a script which shows some possible motions that this kind of uh, mechanism can perform. In particular, this mechanism is made up of four elements, four rods. For example, this can be one rod. Then we have some hinges here, 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 and also here, which couple two adjacent rods. Finally, we have this last rod here, which can be thought of as the ground. So I'm assuming that this last rod is horizontal and it represents the ground. But you can think of four rods. And let's assume that this is point A, this is point B, this is point C, this is point D. And then let's give some lengths to these rods. For example, this is lowercase a, this is lowercase b. This is lowercase c, like this. And then we have to define some angles with respect to the horizontal line. So this rod here forms an angle which is theta with the ground. I mean the rod AB. Then I have the rod BC, which makes some angle with the ground that I can call phi. Then the rod CD makes some angle with uh, the horizontal line which is gamma so i'm uh, defining all the angles in such a way that they are um, counterclockwise angles and finally i have uh, the angle of the last rod here which is uh, just equal to pi if you want because this is horizontal and it's the angle that the vector dA forms with respect to the positive direction of the x-axis. So this angle here is pi. It is just a convention which helps us uh, define all these quantities. We will assume that the four lengths of the rods are given. So A, B, C, D are given lengths. And then we also have to assume that one of these angles is given because this uh, mechanism has one degree of freedom. It is possible to show the, that it has one degree of freedom. It is not difficult. It's very easy, actually. So, for example, let's take one rod. One rod can move along x, along y, and it can also form an angle theta with respect to the ground. So, in principle, each rod has three degrees of freedom. So, we have one, two, three, four rods. We have to be careful because this rod here is on the ground. So this rod has zero degrees of freedom. So we can simply multiply instead of by four, we multiply by four minus the element that's uh, stationary with respect to the ground. So four minus one. And then we have to subtract all the other degrees of freedom which are removed by these hinges. And each of these hinges will uh, constrain the rod to rotate. It can, it can only rotate. So a rotation has only one degree of freedom. Therefore, each of these hinges will remove two degrees of freedom. So we have minus two times the number of hinges, which is four. So you can see that here we have three times three, which is nine minus 8 and therefore we are left with 1. This is one way to show it. It is also quite easy to show it once we derive the equations, the fundamental equations of the four bar linkage. This is quite an important linkage because it's used in mechanical engineering, in engineering in general. Why is this important? It is important because, for example, if we have a motor, an electric motor, and the electric motor will be related to one of these hinges because it will be coupled by means of gearboxes, for example, 
to one of these rods. So you have to think that maybe along one of these axes, which pass through these points, A, B, C, or D, we have a motor. For example, the axis passing through the point A. And therefore, theta will be related to the angular velocity of the motor by means of some reduction coefficient, because there is some kind of transmission with some gearboxes placed upon a shaft. Therefore, we are given some law of motion, which relates the motor to theta. We, have, we will have some law. Theta is a function of time, t, whereas the length of the rods, of course, are just constants, a, b, c, and let's assume that a, d here is just d. So a, d is length d. But theta is some kind of law, and we assume that we have theta. And by means of uh, a four-bar linkage, if we choose A, B, C, D in a certain way, we can obtain a different law of motion, for example, for C, D, this uh, rod. And C, D is described by this angle that I call gamma here. So we can obtain a different law of motion, gamma equal to gamma of t. So it is very convenient when we want to transform a law theta of t into a law gamma of t. In general, for very simple four-bar linkages, theta will simply be some kind of law of this kind. We have some angular velocity times time, meaning that we have the rod AB, which is called a crank in this case, and it will perform a motion from 0 to 2 pi continuously. So this rod will rotate in this fashion and it will complete a full circle if you want. But this does not happen all the time. It depends on the geometry A, B, C, and D. And I will try to show you later. Whereas, for example, gamma might span a different interval. So, for example, it can move from some angle here, that is defined like this, to some angle here, defined like this. So instead of spanning a full circle, it can simply span this kind of interval here. So I hope you understand. But now I want to show you some examples with uh, MATLAB. And um, if you're interested, then later I will also show you some equations that I used to construct the script with MATLAB. So let me go to MATLAB to show you some examples. In this case, I start from four values for A, B, C, and D. You can see that in this case, I've chosen A to be equal to 10, B equal to eight, C equal to 10, and D equal to eight, which means that in this case, the length A is equal to the length C, whereas B, the length B is equal to the length D. And this is simply a parallelogram. So we have 10, this is 8, something like this, and then this is 10, and this is 8. So it can be constructed in a similar fashion. It's a parallelogram. But this is not the only way to arrange this four bar linkage, if you think about it. We can also rearrange this kind of parallelogram in a different manner. So we start with uh, 8. So this is uh, the um, rod that we called AD. Here I'm starting from AD. Then I have another rod which is equal to 10, something like this, which is uh, the rod AB, this one here. Then I might have CD like this, which is still equal to 10. And finally, I close the mechanism in this fashion. So this is another way to arrange this kind of uh, four bar linkage. And I will show you now with a simulation on MATLAB that it is possible to have both configurations. And I have created a script that, let's say, shows you quite randomly a possible configuration and a possible motion of the four bar linkage. The way that I have phrased the problem here is not completely unique. It is not unique. 
you can find several configurations. It depends on this law, theta equal to theta of t, and with the descript in MATLAB, I didn't define this kind of law here. You have some constraints, so depending on a, b, c, and d, it is possible that theta does not exist, so you cannot choose arbitrarily a, b, c, and d, not completely arbitrarily at least. So I have created a script that will tell you that if, for example, b is too large, then it is not possible to put everything, to assemble everything into a four-bar linkage, which is uh, quite interesting. Then let me also tell you that we are only considering kinematics here. There might be other constraints related to the dynamics because these uh, rods will have some masses and therefore they have some inertia. And due to that kind of inertia, in principle, there are other constraints which tell you how fast or how slow these rods are moving. In this case, I'm not considering dynamics. I'm only considering kinematics. So I have some law, theta, theta of t, which will have to be constrained by the length of these rods. And then after we have theta or theta of t, since this has only one degree of freedom, we will have gamma, which will be a function of theta. And also phi will be a function of theta. And once we have gamma and phi, we can draw for each theta the four bar linkage. But never mind, this is easier to visualize with MATLAB than it is to explain here with words. Let me show you this kind of uh, script, and in particular, the not the script itself, but the representation of the four bar linkage, a possible configuration with this data. Then we will change also these inputs. But now we have these values, and let's see what happens when I plot the four bar linkage, when I animate its motion, you can see that it is moving like this. This is a possible motion of this four bar linkage. It is not the only possible motion. As I told you, the script generates a motion quite randomly. And I will not delve into the details of the script. It is quite complicated because you have to try to adjust some uh, some details. It's, it's quite, it's quite uh, complicated to talk about all the details. But once you understand the theory, it is also possible to construct a script. If you have basic programming skills, there is nothing complicated. Anyway, take a look at how it's moving now. And I would like to show you other possible configurations. Let's see if uh, there is something strange about this motion. Because as I told you, the motion is quite random in the sense that it is generated quite randomly. But let's see, let's just take a look at it. Now you can see that it, it uh, went back down like that with some kind of jerk. And as I told you, this is because the choice for theta was quite random, but it could have been possible to see the four bar linkage move in the upper part of this plane. As I told you, this is not unique. It is not, there is not any unique solution. I try to be as general as possible, but you know that when you are too general, it is possible to lose some details. You see how it's moving. That's interesting. You see, it changed the configuration. So you can see that this is the second configuration that I talked about a little bit earlier. This is how it's moving. This is another possible motion of the four bar linkage. You see, it's quite complicated. It's more complicated to visualize this one. If you didn't have a script, not so easy to, to visualize, but this is still a possible motion. Okay, so now it's over. The simulation is over. Maybe 
I can uh, run the script one more time to show you that it generates quite random motions. This is still more or less the same as before. So it's not completely different. I would like to show you something, say more, uh, more different. So I, I paused the script. Actually, I terminated the script. Now, if I run it again, you can see that it starts in a completely different situation, in a completely different configuration. This is still a configuration that we saw earlier. The starting point, the starting configuration was different because, as I said, I increased the randomness of my script. So we don't really know what is the output of my script before uh, visualizing uh, the configuration. You see that anyway, this kind of configuration, uh, this kind of motion was represented also in the previous simulation. So nothing too strange about it now. Let's see. Okay, so the simulation is over. Let me change these values a little bit. So by the way, these are just simple units. I you can think of this as millimeters, meters, whatever you want, or even percentage. So you can you can put 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, and 0 0.76, whatever. So you can think of this as percentages. For example, 0 0.1 would be 10% of one unit, and the unit can be whatever you want. If I run this, you can see a different four bar linkage this is a different motion and this is a possible motion of the four bar linkage and as i told you earlier it might not be the only one the script will give me some kind of a random uh, configuration random motion let's see okay so it stopped here let me try one more time I think that more or less this is still the same as before. Let's see how it moves. It was the same. So let's try one more time. The starting point in this case was a little different. Now it's moving back and, and forth. This was a little different than before. I'm trying to find a configuration for which this crank here is uh, moving in a different manner. Let's see if I run, run it again. Now, this is a little bit different. You can see that this is a different configuration. You can see the crank now is moving with a theta greater than zero. Actually from zero to pi over two. This kind of configuration was not shown in previous simulations, but it is actually quite intuitive. It's completing a, it's completing a, a circle. This was a good one because it showed 360 degrees of uh, this crank. The crank does not necessarily rotate by 360 degrees all the time. It depends, as I told you, on the length of these rods. Let me show you one more example, and then maybe we can we can um, try to discuss the details, the mathematical details, and how I implemented. It's motion. This is quite a complicated script, but it's more complicated because there are some subtleties, some details. But if you understand the mathematics behind it, it will be quite easy to construct a script. At least you will get, you will have all the ideas behind it, and it is possible to implement these ideas with a script. And then, of course, you can implement it with um, 
MATLAB or Python or uh, whatever you like. Now, let me show you that if I choose a value here, which is very large with respect to the others, then it is quite intuitive that the four bar linkage will not exist. Right? Because if you think about it, in case you chose a value for A very large, let's say that A is this large, then how can you assemble the four bar linkage? Now, if this is so large, it is possible that CD and CB will not reach this point, right? So it is quite, it makes sense that this four bar linkage will not exist. Let's see. In this case, what I expect is that the four bar linkage does not exist. So if I run the script, let me see what I get. You can see that I get this indication here, this line telling me that the four bar linkage cannot be formed since Terra cannot be found. So in this case, it's because I have some equations on Terra. So Terra will depend on the lengths of the rods. I have, I have some formula for, uh, for gamma and um, the formula for gamma will also depend on Terra as I will show you in a few minutes, because I want to show you the mathematics behind it. The mathematics are quite easy, but there are some constraints that arise from the mathematics that are not so easy when you want to implement everything into a script. Now, before getting to the mathematics, let me try to show you some, some other example. Now I will really try to find uh, different lengths here, for example, like this, a equal to 10, b equal to 5, c equal to 12, and d equal to 12. Let's see if I can find a 4-bar linkage like this. Yes, and this is a possible motion of this linkage. You can see that the motion can be complicated. This is another type of motion. This is still quite intuitive. Now it's more complicated when you see that, that kind of the kind of uh, change, abrupt change in uh, theta and also other angles. But it is still possible to have this kind of motion. This is still, I think, the same motion as before. Well, not the same, not the same actually. Oh, I solved the problem also numerically because there are some constraints here in my script which are just simply due to numerical uh, solutions. But everything is based upon the formulas that I will show you in a couple of minutes. The formulas are not enough because you also need to make sure that the motion is quite smooth. So that's why I have... Uh, had some kind of difficulty in constructing a script because if you even if you solve the four bar linkage and it is quite easy to solve you will find some angles gamma and phi which will depend on theta like this but even with these expressions it will not be so easy to find the motion and i will try to explain it in a few minutes let me do just one more simulation let me change the length of C, for example, to one. Let's see if I can find a four bar linkage. Yes, this is a possible motion. Now this is another one, but you can see that it is fixed. So in this case, it doesn't show me anything relevant. This is another one, another one. Another possible motion. Another possible motion. Another possible motion. Run again. Run again. Okay. So you get you can get the idea. You you can really play with all these values here. 
to find uh, different ways, different arrangements, different configurations for this four bar linkage. Anyway, now I, I really want to show you the mathematics behind it. So let's stop playing with uh, MATLAB here and let's really get down to the mathematics. So let me stop MATLAB. And let's start reasoning on this kind of uh, four bar linkage. Let me erase this part. I don't need it. And then let me write down the fundamental equations of this four bar linkage and to show you how I can find the laws for gamma and phi. And then from the expressions of gamma and phi, we will also see that theta is constrained if we don't know anything about theta. In principle, you will see that when we find the laws for gamma and phi, also theta will undergo some constraints. And let's also erase this one because I don't need this law here. What I can write is I can write down this equation. I can write A times the cosine of theta, which is this length. So it's the projection of AB on the x-axis. And then I know that if I add B cosine phi, I am, I am adding the projection of BC on the x-axis. Then I can add C cosine gamma. And in this case, what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm adding the projection of CD on the x-axis, and then I have to add the projection of AD on the x-axis, which is plus D times the cosine of pi. So this will be minus D. I can rewrite it like this, and this, then this will be zero. Or if you want, you can rewrite this as equal to D. You can easily check that because we have this projection here, the projection of AB, then we have the projection of BC, which is this, and then I have the projection of CD, which is this, and therefore this is equal to D. That's easy to check, right? Then I'm considering the projection on Y, so I have A sine theta plus B sine phi, so I have this projection here, plus this small projection here. This will be equal to CD times the sine of gamma. Now here you have to pay attention to the sine. So you have to put plus C times the sine of uh, gamma. And this is equal to zero. Why? Well, because if you think about it, in this configuration here, the sine of gamma will be negative because it's greater than pi. So the absolute value of this in this configuration will be minus C absolute value sine gamma. And therefore you get that in absolute value, this is equal to the absolute value of this. So you have to be a little careful, but another way to, to do that is really by considering vectors. So you have the vector AB plus the vector BC plus the vector CD plus the vector DA equal to zero. Now if you take the x component of this, you have, so you take the dot product with the, the unit vector going along the positive x direction. So AB dot I, so I is a unit vector going along X like this. Then you will have A cos theta or AB. Then you have BC dot I, which is B cosine phi. And then you will have the projection of um, CD 
along x so cd in this case is moving like this this is the angle gamma and this is i this is the vector cd so cd dot i will give you mode cd but the mode cd is simply equal to c lowercase c times the cosine of this angle here so this is the cosine of that angle can be written as 2 pi minus uh, gamma like this right but the cosine of 2 pi minus gamma is simply equal to cosine gamma right and and then finally you have d here so on the right hand side because da dot i is simply equal to minus d easy to check then you can do the same thing by considering the dot product here along y so a b dot j this is a b this angle here is theta so you have a b dot j which is equal to the length of a b which is a and then you have the length of j which is 1 and then you have the cosine of this angle here so the cosine of pi over 2 minus theta but this is just sine theta and here we have a sine theta and then similarly for bc bc is something like this this is just the angle phi and here you have j similarly here bc dot j is equal to b sine phi then you have a vector cd here you have j and you have this angle which is gamma right so in this case you have to consider j dot cd and this is equal to the length of cd which is just equal to c that's the cosine of the angle in between which is this angle here so it is this angle here plus pi over 2 so it's cosine of pi over 2 plus and what about this part of the angle this portion that's just 2 pi minus gamma plus 2 pi minus gamma like this right so this will be simply equal to this is cosine of pi over 2 times the cosine of 2 pi minus gamma then you get minus sine pi over 2 times sine sorry sine of 2 pi minus gamma like this this is 0 this is 1 and sine of pi over um, 2 pi minus gamma can be written so this is minus sine of 2 pi minus gamma which is equal to minus we have sine 2 pi times cosine gamma minus cosine 2 pi sine gamma but this is zero and here in the end we simply get sine gamma and there you go so this is how you can easily motivate these two equations here now basically we really have two unknowns in these two equations because we assume that we can find the angles phi and gamma as a function of theta and a b c and d are the given lengths of the rods now how can we solve those two equations for example if i want to find an expression for gamma in terms of theta we can eliminate the angle phi and how can i do that well i can rewrite those two equations in this form b cosine phi on the left 
and then I bring all the other terms to the right. Minus a cosine theta, minus c times cosine gamma, plus d, and then I have b sine phi equal to minus a sine theta minus c times sine gamma. Now I can square these two equations. I can square this one and I can square this one below. And now I can sum those two equations. So when I sum these two terms, I will get rid of phi because I have b, b squared cosine squared phi plus b squared sine squared phi. So I get b squared equal to a squared cosine squared theta plus c squared cosine squared gamma plus d squared plus 2ac times cosine theta cosine gamma minus 2ad cosine theta plus and then I have minus 2cd cosine gamma plus a squared sine squared theta plus c squared sine squared gamma plus 2ac sine theta sine gamma. Now I can simplify this equation a little bit because you can see that a squared cosine squared theta will sum with a squared sine squared theta and c squared cosine squared gamma will sum with c squared sine squared gamma. Now I can rewrite this equation like this. I will only leave this term by itself here. So I have 2ac sine theta sine gamma equal to b squared minus a squared minus c squared minus d squared minus 2ac cosine theta cosine gamma plus 2ad cosine theta and then I have plus 2cd cosine gamma like this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to square both sides again because now I want to rewrite sine gamma in terms of the cosine. So here you can see that on the right I only have cosine gamma here and here but on the left I have the sine. So if I square it I have 2ac sine theta all squared and then sine squared can be written as 1 minus cosine squared gamma. And this will be equal to b squared minus a squared minus c squared minus d squared plus 2ad cosine theta and then I have plus 2cd minus 2ac cosine theta here times cosine gamma and this is squared. Now I can define this here to be g, it is a function of theta, whereas this part here will be e equal to e of theta, whereas this part here will be f equal to f of theta. Now I can simply square both sides and I can rearrange those terms. So here I have g squared minus g squared cosine squared gamma equal to e squared plus f squared cosine squared gamma plus 2ef cosine gamma and you can write this as g squared plus f squared cosine squared gamma plus 2ef cosine gamma plus e squared minus g squared equal to zero. Now this is an equation, it is a second degree equation and we have to solve it for cosine gamma. And if you do the computation, you have cosine gamma equal to minus ef plus or minus square root of ef squared minus g squared plus f squared times e squared minus g squared divided by g squared plus f squared. And if you want 
this can also be written like this minus ef plus or minus the absolute value of g square root of minus e squared plus g squared plus f squared and we divide by g squared plus f squared now this is the expression for cosine of gamma and in principle we have two possibilities this one with a plus and this one with a minus so we have cosine of gamma 1 and we have cosine of gamma 2 gamma 1 with a plus and gamma 2 with a minus and you can see that gamma depends on theta because e f and g are not constants we define them here and they are functions of theta and what we really need to do to construct a script that's what i did we have to impose the fact that this square root exists so one condition is that minus e squared plus g squared plus f squared is greater than or equal to zero and this is an inequality which contains theta so we have some constraints on theta if this inequality is satisfied for all thetas then theta can be between 0 and 2 pi otherwise that interval can be reduced in the sense that not all values between 0 and 2 pi can be acceptable and this is one condition but it is not the only condition we also have to make sure that cosine of gamma 1 the absolute value is less than or equal to 1 and cosine of gamma 2 is less than or equal to 1 and this is something that I have implemented in MATLAB these conditions I will show you a little bit the script but without getting into the details for gamma 1 we also have to be careful because we might have sine of gamma 1 equal to plus the square root of 1 minus cosine squared gamma 1 but also with a minus so we really have gamma 1 1 let's say and gamma 1 2 so the one with the minus here 1 minus cosine squared gamma 1 so from here we get gamma 1 1 and gamma 1 2 and from this other one from gamma 2 and we might have gamma 2 1 and gamma 2 2 so gamma 2 1 is associated to the square root of 1 minus cosine squared gamma 2 whereas gamma 2 2 is associated to the square root of 1 minus cosine squared gamma 2 with a minus so here i have to put a minus i also have this possibility for the sine this is sine of gamma 2 equal to this and in particular sine of gamma 2 1 whereas the sine of gamma 2 2 will be equal to this this is still another possibility right so you can see that i have several ramifications several bifurcations of my solutions therefore i have different possibilities and that's why it is quite complicated to construct the motion of the four bar linkage because you have several ramifications and you have to put them together to try to construct a smooth motion that's what i did basically let me show you just um, the intuition behind the script here i simply have defined theta between 0 and 2 pi and i have added some randomness by um, generating this random number from 0 to 1 and if I multiply that by 2 pi here, I will get a random number between 0 and 2 pi. And I have added that to theta. So theta will be an interval which goes from some, some real number between 0 and 2 pi. And it will go to the same real number plus 2 pi. So it is an interval of 2 pi, but it starts at the generic number alpha from 0 to 2 pi and let me add that this interval will be constrained by r equations and therefore the actual values for theta will belong to this interval but uh, as i said earlier the length of the interval might be decreased the span of this interval might be decreased okay but this is just uh, this is nothing major it is simply one way to define this interval theta 
and then here you can see that I have defined G, I have defined E, and I have defined F. So I have E, F, G. These functions of theta, they are functions of theta. E, F, and G. And then I have defined cosine of gamma 1 and cosine of gamma 2. So the cosine of gamma 1 is the solution with a plus here before the square root, whereas the cosine of gamma 2 has a minus. Then I have to make sure that the discriminant of the square root is greater than or equal to 0. And I have and I have found the indices which satisfy this inequality, the discriminant greater than or equal to 0. If I cannot find any value for theta which uh, satisfies this inequality, then the four bar linkage cannot be formed, cannot exist, right? So I'm simply finding with this uh, line of code the indices for which this inequality is satisfied. So I, I know that if I calculate theta at these indices, this inequality is satisfied, which is good. That's what I want. And then I have uh, redefined my vectors. They are vectors because they depend on theta. I have redefined my vectors in such a way that uh, cos gamma 1 and cos gamma 2 and theta contain only those values where uh, the square root is uh, non-negative. And then I also need to ascertain, I need to make sure that the absolute value of cosine of gamma 1 is less than or equal to 1 and the absolute value of the cosine of gamma 2 is less than or equal to 1. I'm simply trying to find the indices for which these inequalities are satisfied. And I have called them index 1 and index 2. If I cannot find such indices, then the four bar linkage cannot be formed, cannot exist. All right? And then I take, for example, gamma 1. So here I have cosine gamma 1. And for cosine gamma 1, you know that I have another ramification. And the ramification appears inside this uh, if condition here. So in particular, let's assume that we have cosine of gamma 1. We have cosine of gamma 1. We have found the expression for the cosine of gamma 1, the one with the plus. We know that. In principle, there is also the condition with the minus, so we have to consider all the possibilities. We started from this system of equations, and from the first equation, I can obtain the cosine of phi, because I have cosine of phi equal to minus a cosine theta, and then I have minus c cosine gamma, and I have found cosine gamma earlier, plus t divided by b. Now, once I have the cosine of phi, here I can also find sine of gamma, because I also have cosine of gamma. And in this case, remember that we have several ramifications. So we have to be careful and, let's say, consider all the possible ramifications. So sine of gamma can be either plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine squared gamma. So I have another ramification. And then if I choose one of these two ramifications, when I choose one of these two ramifications, I can also find the sine of phi from here. And sine of phi will be minus a sine theta, minus c sine gamma, and then I have to divide by b, like this. And this is what I did in my script. So you can see that I have cosine of gamma, enters this expression here, where I find cosine of phi, then I find sine of gamma, simply from the square root of 1 minus cosine gamma squared, and here I choose the square root with a plus, and below I will also choose the square root with a minus, to consider all the possible ramifications. And then I will also have another ramification where I have cosine of gamma 2, instead of cosine of gamma 1. Then I also use this expression here, sine of, sine of phi 1 is minus a sine of theta minus c sine of gamma divided by b inside this ramification, and I have to make sure that I have to consider only those indices where the sine of phi squared plus cosine of phi squared is equal to 1. I have to make sure that this is true. I don't, I don't know that in principle a priori, because 
I have found the cosine of phi and the sine of phi with these two different expressions. I am not really sure, a hundred percent sure that if I take the square of this plus the square of this, I will obtain one. And then I consider all the other ramifications. So I will not get into the details of all the other ramifications. These are all the possible ramifications. And at some point, at some point here, I will simply rearrange all the vectors in such a way that I will obtain a smooth motion of the four bar linkage. And this is quite nasty. It's more complicated because uh, there are some wild conditions here with uh, several uh, numerical conditions to be checked. And finally, I simply plot the configuration of the four bar linkage. So I will not get into the details of this, but this is basically what you can get. You can start from the mathematics of the four bar linkage and you basically, you basically get um, the possible motions of uh, the four bar linkage once you make all the necessary considerations.